Welcome to WordWall 1.5, WordWall Basics. The purpose of this presentation is to help you to get started using a tool, a vocabulary tool called a WordWall in your classroom. Here's our objectives. We'll identify first why teaching vocabulary matters, especially in the CTE setting. Then we'll show you how to get started using your WordWall. We'll give you some guidelines and pointers into using the WordWall in your teaching. And then we'll look at some activities and strategies. So let's get started. Experts have identified three vocabulary tiers, basic vocabulary, academic vocabulary, and content specific vocabulary. Here's the first tier. These are simple words, basic vocabulary words are simple words that we see and use every day. Here's some examples. The second vocabulary tier are academic vocabulary words. We don't speak them much, but we see them often in text. And because they are in text so often, we're going to need them to uh, better comprehend the readings that we're doing. They improve the descriptive capabilities that students have, and they're needed for the understanding of NOCTI questions. And there's some examples at the bottom. Our third vocabulary tier is content-specific vocabulary. These are lower frequency words, and they are specific to a CTE field or an academic discipline. And we're going to need them, or the kids will need them rather, for to get a thorough understanding of new concepts, and they're really important to our instruction in the CTE field. And you can see some examples at the bottom, and it's pretty obvious we're not going to hear those words as often outside of uh, the classroom or in the industry that they happen to pertain to. Here's yet another reason why it's important for, for us to actually teach vocabulary in our classrooms, and that is the vocabulary deficit. You know, an average child from a welfare family hears about 3 million words a year compared to 11 million from a professional family. By the time the kids get to first grade, kids from higher socioeconomic groups know about twice as many words as kids from lower socioeconomic groups. And then finally, by the time they get to high school, seniors near the top of their class know about four times as many words as their lower performing classmates. And here's a couple good statistics for us to understand, help us understand why teaching vocabulary is so very, very important. Now one last reason why it's so very, very important for us to teach vocabulary is the number of times a student needs to hear a word and to commit it to memory. Research indicates that a new word needs to be heard and used between 12 to 17 times until a student can easily recall and use that word. There's a couple good reasons why it's so very important for us to teach vocabulary. But where does a word wall fit into all this? Well, the word wall is going to ensure maximum student exposure to those crucial tier two and tier three vocabulary terms that the students aren't very familiar with, but need for understanding um, questions in a NOCTI exam and also for understanding and learning the content. Word walls energize your vocabulary instruction, enabling all kinds of fun activities and games these games and activities are compelling, lively, and fast-moving, and a whole lot of fun for the teachers and the kids. And word walls are quite inexpensive and really easy to set up and get started using. So what do you have to do? All you need is a wall or a bulletin board, but as you're going to see in a few moments, a whiteboard is preferred. Besides space on your wall, you're going to need some sentence strips or some pieces of cardboard. They're available flat like this, or you can get them in rolls too. How about a roll of magnets? You could pick these up at your office supply store. You put them on the back of the uh, cards so you could use them on your metallic whiteboard. Now after you have the word written on the front of the cardboard strip and you're done affixing the magnet onto the back of the card if you're going to be using it on a whiteboard, many users of word walls choose to write a few items on the back of the card and the things you want to write on the back or anything you could use in your class uh, that when you're using the word wall term these could be antonyms or synonyms or perhaps a student friendly definition or a couple of thought provoking questions again anything that's going to help you to help the kids remember what these words mean or things you could put on the back of the card Now after you have your word wall term ready with the magnets on the back of the word, maybe some synonyms and antonyms on the back that you could use in your teaching as well, um, now you're ready to go to work. And of course with the magnet 
the uh, board wall term is going to stick nicely and easily to your white your, your whiteboard, and you'll be able to move it around as you see fit. Now make sure your kids are ready, your students are ready to write down something in your notes with these definitions might be, because it's going to be something that they're going to want to be looking at when they go uh, to go to test. Now, you have the word out here, make sure the students understand and have, have an idea what the definition is, have them write it down, all right? And then you can go to work and ask the students questions like, who is it that legislates? Okay, and see what the students say. Um, hopefully they're going to come up with the idea of maybe that legislators actually legislate. And then when that happens, write it down. Okay? And you might want to remind your students to write it down as well. Anything you could do to help your kids get it can make a connection like that. How about another form of the word? Legislation. Legislation. Okay? Once again, we're using different forms of the word. So hopefully the student is going to be able to make some connections with it. And now you're free to bring in some other terms as well. Of course, legislation happens in the Senate and also in the House of Representatives. All right? So we're making a connection that way. How about images? It might be good to bring images into the scene as well. Many students will recognize that this is the capital of the United States. And then you can remind them that this is where the, legislat the, 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 the legislation happens where the legislators do their work, where the Senate is, and where the United States House of Representatives is. You might also remind your students that legislation happens at the state level and state government here in Pennsylvania and Harrisburg, of course, and also at the local level in the county and in the cities where the students may live. Okay? So anything we can do to make connections with the students, and the students can remember these words, with the images, different forms of the word as well, anything associated with word is a good thing to do when you're working with the word wall. Now here's something else that you may uh, that you may want to try out. That's pretty important you to try out, actually. There are certain terms that we call academic vocabulary. Here's a very small example of what some of those words might be: accommodate, calculate, compile, despite, enforce, finance. Again, a very small sampling of what some of these academic vocabulary terms are. We as educators. Uh, may use these words pretty regularly in our, in our discussions with the students. There's a good chance that some of the students may not know what these words mean. So that's why it's important that we define them, and as the students will know, we'll, get their under we'll understand the definitions of what these words mean. It's also important to do this because oftentimes these words are used in questions in our high-stakes tests, uh, like the Keystone exams. And of course, if the students don't know what the words mean in the questions, they're going to have a very hard time answering the question itself. So that's why it's hard that we work hard as teachers to make sure the students understand these academic vocabulary terms, along with the more specific terms, uh, the, the terms that are more specific with the labs or the classes that we might teach. And we could do that using our word wall. Now, if your classroom is set up in a way that you absolutely cannot spare any white wall space for your word wall and you doing word wall activities with the magnets in the back of the word, by all means, use a bulletin board if you can to set up your word wall. You know, these words are fixed to the bulletin board. I can't move them around as easily as I can if they were on a whiteboard with the magnets. But certainly, the words are still there. You can still point to them. You can still use them in your teaching by pointing to them, coming over to the word wall and pointing it out. And uh, we're always remembering, of course, that the more the students see a word and are exposed to the word, the quicker they're going to be to uh, remember it or recall, be able to recall it. Something else you might want to think about is putting different uh, forms of the word together. Here, for example, we have corrupt and corruption, contradiction and contradictory, both important terms that the students may not be aware of. And also notice, if you have some ELL students, some uh, students who are not super comfortable with the English language, you could possibly uh, put up um, uh, Spanish uh, words or um, uh, translation of the words of the student's native language so the student can uh, make a connection that way also. So corrupto here for corruption, uh, excuse my Spanish, but it pronounce it very well, or in contradicion down here. Okay, anything we could do to help the students understand uh, the vocabulary words is, is going to be a good thing. Well, now you're about ready to get started in using a word wall in your teaching in your classroom, and also why vocabulary instruction is so crucial in the CTE setting. Stay tuned for some more presentations on word wall activities coming up in the future, and thanks for watching.